All right, this is our Coca-Cola bottling company case. My name is Enrique Sisme, and we have Kyle and John. Some background information about Coca-Cola bottling company. They were originally founded in 1902 by three entrepreneurs in Charlotte, North Carolina, by the name of J.B. Harrison, J. Luther Snyder, and J.P. Gibbons. In the early days of the business, production workers used to wash refillable bottles by hand, usually using mainly operated bottling machines to fill them, cork them by hand, and sell them on a horse-drawn carriages. Since then, for over 116 years, they've expanded to a sales of juices, waters, sports drinks, and iced coffees, as well as acquiring new territory territories in the country. Currently, the company is the largest independent Coca-Cola bottler in the United States. Uh, it makes and sells dis and dis distributes Coca-Cola products along with other partner companies in more than 300 brands and, and uh, flavors across 14 states to over 65 million people. It's mainly based in the Southeast, Midwest, Mid-Atlantic portion of the United States. Currently, they have 13 manufacturing facilities, 76 distribution and warehouses, with corporate offices located at their headquarters. Um, this, for the discussion of strategy, since being such an iconic brand, the company maintains a well-developed um, dif differentiation strategy um, by, re by revolutionizing the way we uh, enjoy soda beverages. Um, the company has a large um, product portfolio with more than 500 sparkling and um, still brands with nearly 3,900 beverage choices. Um, going to this, the freestyle machine, that's one strategy they do well in because it's a the freestyle machine is a touchscreen soda fountain that features 165 different Coca-Cola products. This machine allows users to select uh, mixtures of Coca-Cola branded products that are eventually dis uh, dispensed, giving co consumers the ability to um, customize their own drink based on preference. They also do well on having a cost leadership strategy. Um, over the years, they've been doing well keeping their prices low and easily accessible at every corner of the world. Um, back in back in the early days of their company, they've had a they had a price price fix for seventy years, selling their bottles for five cents. And um, packaging also does play packaging plays an essential role in the business by meeting consumer needs as well as promoting and preserving their products. Uh, plastic bottles like Dasani has a 30%, um, they're made from 30% plant-based materials. And even after plastic replaced glass as a standard means of drinking a Coke, the company also maintains the importance of their iconic contour bottle, which was f first introduced in 1916. And today it remains heavily popular and the company continues to promote the shape bottle through varied varieties of advertisements. Now, Kyle will be talking about the driving forces. Four driving forces that we consider for the Coca-Cola bottling company are changing consumer lifestyles, changing expenses, employee turnover and availability, and product innovation. As far as the changing consumer lifestyles goes, this is mainly in reference to the increased desire for healthy beverage alternatives. Um, this is an area that consumers have become increasingly aware of over the past many years and it will certainly affect the layout of the beverage industry in the future. Changing expenses refers to, in more specifically, increased expenses that Coca-Cola Bottling Company has seen in the past years with increased amounts of product they're trying to sell and just moving more product in general. Employee turnover and availability refers to um, just issues they've had with employees finding new work or not staying and being, uh, talent has thinned with the three times growth they've seen in the past three years. Product innovation is a, a big driving force for this industry with new beverage lines coming out and keeping consumers interested in their brands. Now for the key success factors of Coca-Cola Bottling Company, we have high product awareness, product variety, magnitude, and advertising. Now when I'm saying high product awareness, I mean 
awareness for the products that they sell and make and package for Coca-Cola. These are drinks known all over the country. And this kind of ties into the key success factor of magnitude, because being that they're the largest Coca-Cola bottler in the country, they have access to a lot of selling channels throughout the country and they can that's just that many more consumers they're able to sell to as far as product variety they sell 300 or so brands that um like appeal to many different consumer bases this is really important being able to sell to as many people as possible and then their advertising coca-cola advertisements are seen everywhere for all of their drink lines and make them prominent to consumers and make selling potential that much higher. Now we have John to talk about SWOT analysis. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna go over the uh, SWOT analysis for the Coca-Cola brand. Um, I'm gonna go over the strengths first. Uh, number one strength that Coca-Cola has is they have a highly recognizable brand, especially here in the United States. Um, and across the globe as well. Uh, they have strong partnerships throughout the supply chain uh, over the years. Um, Coca-Cola has been able to develop very strong relationships because of their consistency. Uh, they have a very attractive organization culture, especially to millennials. Um, they focus on improving uh, employees as in individuals rather than just someone that's gonna show up to work. Um, we have, they have the largest, largest market share in the non-alcoholic beverage category right now in the United States. Uh, they also have a very diversified brand portfolio with um, drinks like Sprite, Fanta, and Dasani. They are all getting a very good foothold in the millennials segmentation today and just as far as how trends are moving um, forward. Uh, the, the weaknesses, uh, the sales operations are not as efficient as they want them to be. I believe a lot of this ties into with um, their employee uh, retention rate. That's kind of uh, kind of go hand in hand together as well. Um, highly, it's a highly competitive industry. People like Pepsi are always trying to um, one up Coca Cola, and they mimic basically everything that they do. But you also have people like Starbucks that are taking away from the non-alcoholic beverage segmentation. Um, other things that we're concerned about is not advancing other product lines to the same level as Coca-Cola. Um, some of their drinks have not been as successful and they've not been able to separate the gap between the drinks. It always seems like Coke um, overshadows these brands and doesn't let them get off the ground. Uh, low product diversification. Um, they do have a lot of beverages to offer, but they do not have anything in like the food categories or anything like that. And those are very good partnerships um, that Pepsi has been able to um, utilize. Um, and we also have employees are switching jobs more frequently today. Uh, just that's kind of the way the society trends are moving ahead. It's um, really nothing to do with Coke's brand or the way that they're um, organization is it's got more to do with just how trends are switching and coke is that's a weakness for coke right now um, opportunities uh, we want to invest more in healthier drinks uh, like the smart water and the body armor brand especially the way that trends are moving you want to increase the amount of plant-based uh, bottles in the production as well we want to run we would bit coke would benefit by running a market campaign that really focuses on these healthier innovations that they have made um, I also believe that they could divest some of the underperforming uh, drinks that are very similar to each other that are taken away from the other brands. Um, and I also believe that they could create a new benefit package that would reward uh, employees based on their production and keep them around longer. Threats are losing market share to non-alcoholic beverage providers. Like I said, we're not just worried about Pepsi, we're also worried about people like Starbucks as Coca-Cola took on Georgia Coffee. Consumer purchasing decisions are becoming more uh, health conscious and that's the way trends are heading. We discussed that earlier. The increased price for aluminum is going to hurt the bottom line as these new tariffs take effect. Internal competition between brands uh, can lead to product cannibaliz cannibalization. And we also have the overhead costs are gonna continue to increase if Coke continues to acquire these smaller brands. Now we'll give the floor back to Kyle. So for the analysis of financials for Coca-Cola Bottling Company, we found overall positive trends seen in the past five years, 2013 through 2017. Uh, return on equity saw the most fluctuation over these five years, starting at about 14%, ending at a 
very good looking 26% roughly. Um, return on asset um, stayed around 2% for these five years. It was very steady. Um, while you would maybe want this percentage to be higher, I think it's worth noting that it stayed steady and positive over a three year period of a very intense growth. So I see that as a positive sign. Uh, the gross profit margin saw high numbers in the 40% to upper 30% ranges over these past years and it started to dip towards 2018. Operating profit margin hovered around 4% before finally dipping to about 2.31% in 2017. And that profit margin hovered around 2 and 3% for the course of these five years. And you can see a more visual representation here. Um, basically, a big takeaway is their return on equity ended at a much more positive point than it started out with for this five-year period. Uh, return on asset, return on equity, and net profit margin were all pretty low percentages, but stayed stable in a time of strong growth. So I think that's an important consideration to take into account here. And on to concerns. All right, so one of the major concerns that we are worried about is just the way that uh, trends are shifting towards healthier drinks. A lot of people are becoming more uh, conscious about the sugar intake that they're taking. Um, and that is a concern that we have for the Coca-Cola brand, especially for Coke's number one product, which is the Coke brand itself, um, not the other drinks that it offers. Uh, the cost of aluminum cans is starting to increase with the new tariffs. That's something that there's no way around it, and Coke is going to have to find a way to explain to consumers why their prices are increasing. Uh, Coca-Cola owns so many brands that it has become susceptible to product cannibalization. Uh, I'm worried with the massive amount of brands that they own that a lot of them are taking away from each other because they're so similar that they're competing against each other and it's hurting the bottom line for Coca-Cola. Um, and I'm also concerned about the employee uh, retention rate. It's kind of decreased the productivity and the um, capabilities of their sales and operations center. All right, now we're going to be talking about the recommendations for the first one. Coca-Cola envisions a world um, in which their bottle packaging is seen as a valuable resource for future use. Like I said, their plastic bottles for Dasani are 30% plant-based materials that are fully recyclable. So we, we believe the company should continue on investing more in their packaging and develop recycled plastics that are made from 100% plant-based materials. By achieving 100% plant, plant-based materi um, materials on all their bottles, this is where greatly reduced the dependence on fossil fuels and increase the use of renewable materials. To date, with their current 30% um, plant-based material bottles, uh, the company has enabled the the company has enabled itself to eliminate the potential for 315,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions. That is equivalent to saving more than 36 million of um, gasoline. By reaching 100%, that number would increase, increase um, drastically. Okay, on the uh, recommendation number two, uh, we want to focus more on the benefit system and changing the way the bonuses operate to keep the uh, to increase the retention rate for our employees. We want to keep them around longer. Um, you're going to have to tackle this in two categories, new employees and older employees. Uh, for the new employees that come in, they're generally going to want to see uh, more money coming in, and that's going to entice them to uh, take out their goals and to reach the goals that they are placed in, for, in front of them for their uh, respective uh, job categories. Uh, so we want to basically give them money for reaching goals that we that will help us reach the product producti productivity level that we want to reach. Now for employees that have been there for a while, they have kind of established themselves and gotten to a um, routine as far as their finances go and they want more long-term options to choose from. Uh, I think that we could benefit these employees by offering them uh, stock options into the company that would definitely keep them uh, in the Coca-Cola family and wanting to invest their sales into the brand more uh, or have the alternative of having a 401k contribution made by the Coca-Cola company as well. Um, something that would be um, equally significant as owning a stock. Just something to entice people that are there to invest their self more and other opportunities to invest new employees to um, reach their full potential. All right. For our third and final recommendation for Coca-Cola Bottling Company, uh, we'd like to start a new healthy energy drink alternative product line. Uh, a title idea for this would be Boost Juice. 
Um, the idea as to like kind of differentiate from Monster and NOS would be no sugar or caffeine, uh, natural juices and B vitamins as implied by the name. Um, and it's not, it would not meant to be as strong as like a Monster or a NOS energy drink that Coke owns now. It, um, it would be a natural alternative to these drinks and this would solve the issue of the um, c changing consumer lifestyles and wanting healthier beverage alternatives and would fill a niche in the market that has not yet been tapped. Um, this about does it for our three recommendations. Thank you.